Hi guys, this is Jar Art Spy and welcome to another tutorial. Now in this one we'll be doing a pretty cool effect, we've been doing 3D stroke. Now obviously we've done the stroke effect in my stroke scope tutorial, um, where the um, scope comes around the scope, stroke comes around the scope, try saying that 10 times quickly. Anyway, um, I showed you how to do this, pretty simple, um, but we're actually going to be looking at how to use 3D stroke on its own, um, and as you see I used it in here, you see if I just turn Oh, that's not that one. Where's my color correction? Oh, I can't turn off. Oh well. Um, basically, you see the stroke come in here, and it goes whoosh whoosh, and it basically circles the barrel. Um, it looks pretty cool, and it, it looks quite hard to do, but it's just is actually really simple. So I'm just gonna play this through and show you what we are gonna create today. So let's play this if it wants to work. Now it is it is a really quick effect because I you don't have to be this quick. This is just that this this is like an edit I've already done, so it goes on it goes quite quickly. But as you can see, scopes in and it looks pretty cool and it, it's all masked behind the barrel and it spirals. Now you can do this like around a gun barrel or something. I've seen it done around, around guns, around lamp posts, like these post thingies. You can do it like around loads of things. Make it look really cool, basically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new folder just so I can keep this organized. And we're going to grab the clip. Where is it? Which clip is it? That's this one. Okay. Um, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, drop that in there. Drop it into new composition. Okay, here we go. Alright. Oh, whoops. So here it is. So I'm going to start it roughly here. So I'm going to hold down Shift and press 1 where I want the stroke to start. I'm going to go to where I want to finish. I don't really want to mask it around the gun, so I'm going to want it to finish there. So hold shift 2. So now we know the duration of the stroke. Now this is actually going to be quite quick but it's going to look pretty cool because just any any odd effects kind of that it's like a filler effect almost like it doesn't need to be there but because it's there it looks nice. So now when on the original edit in this edit um, oh it's around here isn't it? I motion tracked it because it, the clip did move a bit but I'm not going to go over motion tracking I'll do that in another tutorial some other day so we've got this now. The first thing we'll do is press Command Y or Control Y to create a solid. Um, make it comp size, and I'm just gonna make it black for now. And I'm gonna call this stroke, like so. Then we are going to go into the effects and presets, and we're gonna type in 3D stroke, like this. Voila! Now we have our stroke. Now this is a trap code plugin. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. So you do need trap code um, to do this. Now we've got that out of the way. So if a quick tip: if you hold Command or Control and press the right arrow, you'll go forward a frame. Press the left arrow, you'll go back a frame. If you hold down Shift, you'll go back ten frames, and so on. It's pretty cool. It's easy when keyframe instead of having to go up here and press the forward keyframe button and stuff. Um, Okay, right, so we've got this now. I'm just going to hold down Alt and open square bracket to cut the solid off there so it starts here pretty much. And then I'll do the same here. I'm going to go forward a frame from there, hold down Alt and click this closed square bracket. Actually, I can do that one back. There we go. So basically, there's a frame on each side of how long it is. Okay, so we've done the, the kind of the boring bit. Now, this is the interesting part. There's no stroke at the moment because there's nothing for the stroke to actually follow, there's no path. So to make a path, it's pretty simple. You use the pen tool, which is like used for masking. But it also, if you're using it on a stroke, on a layer with a 3D stroke, it will make it a stroke. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the barrel, uh, grab the pen tool, and I'm just going to click here, and then click roughly here, and kind of click and hold and drag. Do the same here. Oh wait, come out a bit further than that. Do the same again. Drag. Boom. Same again. And then I'm not actually going to bring it out from behind that side, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So there we go. Now we have our path. Now, obviously, we haven't connected the dots, so there's no actually, it's not actually masking it. It's just a path. It's only a mask when you connect the first dot to your last dot that you created. So we've got this now. I'm just going to adjust, move it a little bit, just to kind of adjust some things so the masking will be easier. Okay, right. There we go. Let's move this up a bit, actually. Sorry, obviously I'm just trying to be make this easier. Right, there we go. So we've got our strap there. Our strap there. I can't speak today. Um, we've got our stroke. Um, our path, sorry. What am I doing? I'm just like messing this up, but I'm just going to keep doing it because it's probably entertaining to watch as well. So 
it's why I do it. I make these videos to entertain you guys and to help you guys and teach you because I'm an amazing teacher. Not that I'm awfully modest at all. Um, anyway, okay, so on the 3D stroke, you want to untick Use All Paths and you want to click Path, Mask One. And voila, you've got a stroke. Now, obviously, that looks stupidly bad. <laughs> it's just like a weird stroke path thingy. Now, to get rid of that, so well, to make it look decent, you have the thickness here. Now, I'm going to use something like 2.5. That's 10 at the moment, so 2.5 is going to be quite thin. So, 2.5 looks pretty cool. That's the one I used. I believe it was 2.5 in the example at the beginning. You can obviously go to 1.5 if you want to make it even smaller. The smaller the more, the more, the smaller it is, the subtler it is. So, there we go. We've got it like that. Now, obviously, it hasn't got any of the fancy glow or anything. Now, to create that, I just dragged on some star glow, which is obviously another trap code plugin, but we'll do that at the end. So we've got this now, but we want to animate it. So to animate it, you need to go to the first frame where you want it to start. Bring the, you see you've got the start and end values here. You can drag the end all the way down to zero and you'll see, whoosh, it does this, it's pretty cool. So you can click the stopwatch at one, go to half, roughly halfway, just over, just like one frame. So if this is like 22, 32, so we know this is 10 frames long. We want to go six frames forward, so hold down command. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then we go into bring the end all the way up to one hundred. So now, so far, is is already started to animate. As you can see, it it kind of follows the path here. But we wanted to also animate out, so come down as well as it goes. So we're going to go back two frames. So we're going to go forward four frames from the original. So one, two, three, four, and we're going to hit the stopwatch on the start, um, the start value. We're going to Go to 2 and we're going to bring the start up to 100. So now as you see the start will basically animate the start where the start is. It's kind of, you see what happens. So as you can see it follows it around. And that is pretty simple obviously. You can change all the settings and stuff like where you put the keyframes. It's just the kind of stuff I use. So obviously bigger gap, um, the bigger gap, the smaller the distance between it, um, each one. So it's like a, sh a short bit. I like to do it kind of roughly here because it looks pretty cool. Um, okay, so we've got the basics now. Now, next what we're going to do is, that is pretty much it. Now, to mask a stroke, that's already got a path on it. You need to pre-compose the layer. But I'll do that in just a second. What I'm going to do is add a bit of glow onto this. So if you click Effect, Stylize, and Glow, you'll see it gives it a slight glow there. If I just You can click this button here. This one where it says toggle mask and shape path visibility next to the time and the uh, magnification and ratio pop up. You can click this button here and it will hide all the masks and stuff so you can just see the layer. And so it looks pretty cool. It's got a slight glow to it. Now, if you don't have star glow, you can add, add, add a glow, mess with all the settings. I'm not going to go much into this because it, the glow settings can be quite complicated. You can just kind of play around, see what changes what, and so on. Um, but what I'm going to use is effect. Trap code, star glow. As you can see, it's changed it already. It looks pretty cool. However, it's, it's not what I want. I want it to be um, a kind of a reddish bluey, like this one. So to do that, I use where it says preset. I use star prism. This is my favorite one. It looks really cool. Now it looks quite big there, but you can actually use like I think I use tilt prism. Actually, yeah, I use tilt prism. You can change the streak length down. So something like one is what I used. So now you see it's got this nice kind of kind of little glow to it almost. You can bring the thickness up again. So I might maybe do use two thickness. Makes the glow a bit bigger. And then you can obviously add a glow on top of this to make that all glow a lot more and it looks really cool now. Okay, so we've got the basics. I'm actually gonna bring the glow down a little bit because uh, another one, the radius. There we go, because it's going to make it a paint to mask. Okay, so now we are going to hold on the stroke layer, hold Shift Command C, or you can do Layer Precompose. You then want to make sure that if it's move all attributes into the new composition, we're going to call this Stroke. Now, as you can see, it's made it all really, really long, and um, that's what she said. Yeah, um, it's just that this like precomp is now the length of the composition. So if you double click on this. You can go to one, you can then zoom out. So press one, it'll keep take you to the first mark we made. Drag this little thingy to here. 
drag this little one to here, hold down shift and it will um, snap. And then what you can do is hold down, right click on the Y area now, trim comp to work area. So now the entire comp is this long. And you'll see it's now at the beginning. So you can just hit one, hit open square bracket, and it will align it for you. Pretty cool. So now we've got, oh, wait, need to go back one frame because we adjusted it a little bit. That's interesting. I've done, oh no, never mind. So now we have our stroke coming in, and there's no mask whatsoever. So, like, if we turn it on, you'll see that there's no mask. So, we can actually mask this now. So, if we go to the first frame and we click this uh, the pen tool here, we want to go forward. Now, we want to mask it. We want to mask this section here where it goes behind it. So, to do that, you just want to go to where it kind of where it's decently over there. So, something a frame like this. Click in the middle roughly and take it up to there in the middle and then you want to bring it down something like there and bring it all the, all the way out here because you don't want it to be seen outside actually no you do sorry my bad i'm going to bring it to the edge of the barrel here and then bring it back up now it's going to do this it's going to make it um only appear there but to change that you hit m and it'll bring up the mask down here you change it to subtract and now you see it's taken off there but you'll see a couple of problems it looks one, it looks quite rough around the edges here, and you can see that it actually chops off the glow. And this is the problem of doing masks quite close together because it will get rid of the glow. But you do have the feather option under the mask to change that. So I'm going to bring the feather up to something like two. Um, you see, it gets rid of that harsh line there, and it actually makes the edges look a lot cleaner as well. So now, if you play through it, you'll see it comes in and it goes behind it here. Boom, boom, gone behind, starting to appear. Then it's going to wrap around successfully like so and then you can literally mask it again here and actually what you can see is that it's really close here like it's really close so i'm going to just go into the stroke composition and i'm just going to change the path slightly um i'm going to drag it down and i'm going to go to this one wait where is it is it this one i can't find it something like I just kind of adjust it till it's there's a decent enough gap. So there we go, that looks better. Yeah, so now we can edit this mask this a bit easier. So it still wraps around it perfectly. Then we're gonna go and mask it here again. Grab the pen tool, do the same thing. Just, uh, go along the lines, go like this. Go and you can obviously go down as far as you want here if you don't want the glow to appear underneath. And then you can just come back up along the edge of the barrel. Uh, same thing, change it to subtract. Uh, I'm going to bring the feather up. So if we just hide it here quickly, you can see it's quite harsh edges. Bring the feather up to two. Harsh edges go away. Zoom out. And if we look in now, you'll see our stroke successfully wraps around. And it doesn't go past the other side. So it looks pretty cool. And this is a really nice effect, even just on a quick scope in like this, because it just looks so subtle. So like here, there's a color correction and everything. It just goes so quickly. It's like, oh, there's something happened now that shouldn't have. Like that's obviously visual effects that didn't happen in the original. So it's a really nice effect, and I do encourage you to use this a lot, guys, because um, a lot of people don't use 3D stroke as much as um, I do. I, I use 3D stroke all the time in my edits. I love it. I think it's such a good plugin. Um, and obviously, you can most then motion track this layer. So I'm not going to motion track. I might do that in my next tutorial. If you want to see motion tracking tutorial, comment in the comment section below saying if you want to see it. Because if you want a motion tracking tutorial, I can do 3D, 2D, whatever you want. So, yeah. Um, and give me some more tutorial suggestions, guys, because I need them. But, yeah, as you can see, um, you can obviously... This clip doesn't move much, but there is slight movement. But, um, obviously, it goes by too quickly to notice anything. But, yeah, it looks really cool. Like, I use this in another edit of mine. I might show you quickly. I'll just save this. Um... In an edit I was working on just for some fun. I think it was this one. Um, I've like started so many edits that I haven't finished, so bear with me. Uh, is it this one? Yeah. Okay. Here, if you look when he when the guy comes down. Uh, where is it? It's like starts here. You see, I've just done a trick shot. You see the stroke appears here, and if I go forward a frame. Hello. You'll see it actually wraps around the pole here, and this one is actually motion track, so you'll see it's sticking to the clip each frame I go through. And it looks such a nice effect, and because this goes by really fast as well, it's hard to notice. You can also notice that in the next frame, I believe it will be. Oh no, one more. See, like the motion track looks really nice, but 
in this frame here, you'll see it actually gets darker behind the um, the black bar, so it actually looks like it's originally in the clip, which is really cool. Um, I think it's, yeah, like here you can see it's a darker shade of grey here, so like where how the black bars darken it, it's darkened the stroke as well. So there's some great things you can do with 3D Stroke. It's such a great plugin. Um, I recommend you use it a lot. So if I play through it here now, you'll see. I'll go back. We'll just buffer a few more frames here. Go through. It's just such an amazing plugin. I really recommend you use it a lot. If you get it, I'm sure you can find some ways of getting it. Um, but yeah, also comment in the section. Comment sections. Tell me what tutorials you want because I'm running out of ideas. Um, I'm trying to cover a lot of basic stuff as well as advanced. So we play through this here. You can see it wraps around and it's 3D tracked and it goes up there. It looks really cool. So yeah, I'm going to end this tutorial up here, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even a favorite if you want to come back and find how to do this effect again. Um, keep entering my editing contest. Got a couple entries so far and they're really good. So keep entering, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep watching my videos because it means so much to me. And I shall see you guys in the next video.